Okay. Should I be rolling now? Or? Go yeah, ahead. we can put it on there, yeah. and we'll do a countdown, and Thank uh, you. we'll just kind of uh, do our thing here, yeah. and uh, I guess then we'll just uh, take it from there. Thank okay. You. And uh, you know how to shut it off? Yeah, yeah, your little red button there if you need to shut it off. Okay. Okay. Yo, I think uh, your bag there makes a bad. Yeah, TV. yeah, I don't want the bag. I just put my glasses in my uh, thing here. I just wanted to move that out of the way because I haven't got my regular glasses on. You notice I bought these from the dollar store, only a dollar. I like the dollar store. They look like they're worth a lot <laughs> less than that. Uh, okay, so uh, let, this is some stuff. They probably are, right? Because they get marked up. <laughs> Right. I'm going to do a countdown here, and then we'll uh, uh, we'll start off, and so it'll be five, four, three, two, one. Blast off. The greetings and salutations. Welcome to the Hither and Yawn Show. Uh, this is another episode, and uh, we're going to be discussing various topics here. Uh, you can introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Hither from Hadley. And I'm Jan from Hadley, and that's Hadley, Massachusetts. And Hadley, Massachusetts, they think that I have a Boston accent, and I said, well, I live in Hadley. and they Versus don't... Hadley, England. Yeah, they, they have probably Hadleys all over God's creation. <laughs> <laughs> Hadley, India. Yeah, there could be Hadleys anywhere. So this is Hadley, Hadley Massachusetts. Hadley, Pakistan. There might be a a a, a Hadley, a, a Pakistan, but I like to call it Pakistan. That's the wrong way to say it. But we should hold on to that question. Yeah, because uh, we'll have another guest in the near future. Uh, uh, he's coming from Pakistan to Pakistan. be to be uh, our special guest, and so we'll have to call him Pac Man. That's terrible. I'm not going to come to that show if you do that. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I, I take a lot of notes when I'm uh, listening to National Public Radio, and I was kind of glancing through some of my notes here, and the last time we got together, we were talking about the iPhone, and they just happened to be talking uh, on National Public Radio about the right to repair because people are complaining that... Uh, uh, they gave the iPhone as an example. They said that uh, you have to bring it over to an authorized Apple dealer even if the uh, glass is broken. Otherwise, uh, uh, you wouldn't be able to uh, get your warranty. Uh, I guess they're trying to have this right to repair concept like the state of Massachusetts has the right to repair the automobiles. They have an automobile right to repair thing that uh, people have the right to do that. And they're trying to extend that to other products such as the uh, phone. I guess they mentioned various products. The phone was one thing. I think they uh, mentioned John Deere as uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, issues that uh, they can't repair the uh, tractors themselves. They have to bring it to an authorized dealer. And uh, John Deere is uh, something that they use on farms. Farmers used to be able to fix their own tractors and stuff, and now they have to have a specialist come over to fix their tractor, and they're complaining about this uh, idea that everything is being uh, turned into some kind of smartphone thing that they have these technologies that nobody else can have and I think that they're, they're talking about uh, for example that Apple phone they said it has to be done at an Apple authorized dealer because of cyber security now what do you think about the cyber security thing on the uh, iPhone you think that's a legitimate excuse oh man it's uh, you know I guess it depends you know I, it's interesting you brought up John Deere as well, because I take my iPhone to my Apple farmer, and his <laughs> name is John, and he raises deer. He's a deer farmer. Hey, John, in case you're watching this out back in the outhouse where Martha's not going to bother you. I don't know about cybersecurity, but, I mean, I, it kind of seems that if you're playing with their ink then you gotta have to use their what 
instruments. I, I don't know. I, well, this is what one of the, who bought in, you know. This I is what in. one of the callers said that uh, uh, he brought his uh, phone uh, to an authorized Apple dealer, and they said it was going to cost him over eight hundred dollars to repair. A caller? We had a caller. Uh, this is the caller to National Public Radio. That's where oh. I get most of my information from. So he said he went right. out and bought these uh, special tools to fix it himself, and he actually fixed the phone himself for under a hundred dollars. Oh, he sounds like he should get a job with Apple. <laughs> well, uh, it I just like goes them to apples, John. It, it, it just goes to show that uh, these uh, these companies are kind of exploiting the masses. Well, maybe, but at the same time, they get you on both ends, right, uh, Jan? Because they incur. Well, I don't know if they encourage you to, but they make available um, like a protection package, you know, uh, insurance, so to speak, as you would with any valuable object, and they would care for the whole phone if in case you, you know, hurt it. But that is a cost as well. So, you know, yeah, you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. Well, uh, that's why the state of Massachusetts had that right to repair automobiles and they just want to extend it to other products there because people are complaining that they have to be paying all outdoors to repair some product, for example, like the John Deere thing that they have to be paying probably more bringing it to their John Deere dealer as opposed to trying to fix it themselves. So they're trying to write a Dear John letter to that John <laughs> Deere situation. Well, this is just one example they mentioned there, and I wanted to uh, talk about that since we were mentioning the iPhone there, although I'm not promoting the iPhone. Me neither. Uh, uh, and uh, they did mention on the radio that the Chinese version, the uh, the what is it, the Hua, Huawei, they actually have. I don't know how to uh, pronounce it, but they have. Ni hao ma. A, they have a thousand dollar phone that they said you can turn night into day, and I don't know if Apple has that feature. Can you? Turn let me night? let me call China on my iPhone and find out. Well, what's, what's the number? <laughs> You never tried to turn a night into day with your phone? I got the number here. Yi, nar, san, siu, wu, liu, chi, ban, cho, shu. He said, sure, they, they can uh, do anything. There. That's the number 10 Okay. in Chinese. That actually in Cantonese. Okay. I, I, I know some of the numbers in uh, other languages... Uh, because uh, I used to play uh, music, and I used to do a countdown, and I did it in other languages, Japanese. It's a ichi, ni, san, chi. That's one, two, three, four. Or ein, zwei, drei, vier. That's German. Uh, and uh, what was the one in uh, Spanish there? Uh, you know the Spanish one. No, the German one goes ein, zwei, drei, vier. Okay. And the Spanish one is uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Excelente, eso movimiento y es un pedazo de gol. That's how you count to five in Spanish. All righty. Well, he seems to know all that stuff there. I had uh, Latin for five years, and I don't really remember my Latin. That's too bad. I'm a Latin American, though. <laughs> I remember one phrase, though, I memorized. It was from uh, a Caesar. They were talking. They said that, Ille erat unus tremendus ex istis omnibus. And that means... Uh, you have a huge uh, evacuation on the bus? No, that meant that he was one to be feared out of all of these. He was uh, like a terrorist. <laughs> so like what I said, kind of. I think if you defecated on the bus, that'd be like a terroristic terrorist act right well this was uh during the time of caesar when we had uh the romans that were conquerors and uh caesar was yeah. the main man there and they only used monorail right i think In that Rome. i think uh this was uh uh hundreds of years ago so, so uh, they had to be having me high learn, speed trains maybe they had me learn latin and uh stuff that uh was like an ancient language they had you learn latin hundreds of years ago yeah i had to learn uh stuff that they used hundreds of years ago you not present day at... stuff i think really the only ones that use latin is the catholic church it's too brute it 
Yes, that was uh, one it's of the too fam- young. famous uh, uh, words. And uh, if you notice, like exit, that's Latin. Uh, uh, that's a Latin phrase. Uh, so they do have Latin phrases, but some people may not realize uh, it you was You want to hear something interesting? In Spanish, which is a Latin language, exito is success. And in some circles, I would say leaving is a success. Like, you're not a success until you get the hell out the door. Well, that's uh, a one perspective. But uh, Thank you. I, I think that uh, the languages have been kind of um, mixing up over the years, and the English has taken a lot of things from other languages. So are the people. Yes, uh, there was a lot of uh, people from other countries here. And I mentioned... They're called I was Americans. A Viking American. I said that I was a Viking American, and I, oh, you're a American. I'm a, a Viking American. You're a Vikarikin. That was because uh, 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 Finland is where my uh, uh, grandparents came from, but Finland was only established in 1918. So you're Finnish. I'm finished. <laughs> Thank you. I'll start talking now. Oh, my God. Uh, Jan, no, it's like you didn't have anyone to talk to all day. So in today's news, we're going to talk a little bit about cyber technology. Yes, Go ahead. And, take uh, it, Jan. Uh, I had some other in- interesting uh, uh, information here. They said that, uh, for example, uh, the, the, uh, the Apple phone had some kind of proprietary code. What does that mean? Mm, probably some kind of unique lockdown that they have a patent or some kind of restriction on. They believe uh, they can, yeah, proprietary, right? It's so, uh, yeah, I, I did remember them mentioning on news that the FBI uh, wanted to uh, uh, check uh, one of these uh, iPhones and they had to try to contact Apple because they wanted to get the information and Apple was reluctant, reluctant to give the information to the FBI. That sounds like a bullshit story. Well, uh, the FBI does have a, a tendency to uh, be snoopervisors. They like to snoop, snoopervise. And uh, now you're hearing about uh, uh, they're having uh, hearings about uh, facial recognition technology because they're thinking that that might be a problem in the United States, although that's what they're using in China. That's their main thing now, facial recognition. But now they're debating about using Man, if they can do it in China... They can do it here. Yeah, There's I'm sure that people in China, man. I'm sure that uh, uh, the authorities uh, still use facial recognition, but they don't want to admit it to the uh, uh, public. They'll have, uh, uh, I think they mentioned on the news, uh, three states gave uh, license. It was it Vermont, uh, Utah, or something? There was a third state that they were giving the ICE uh, the. Uh, the driver's licenses, so they were getting the information. Uh, I mean, facial recognition me. stuff. <clears throat> excuse me. I was going to say, or I'm going to say, the facial recognition is it's uh, it's new only in the sense of uh, that it's now more applicable with technology or at least more widespread. But facial recognition, not to say anything against how I feel about the technology, but we've always used facial recognition, right? I mean, like, isn't it like, do you see the defendant in the room today? Do you see the person who did it? Yeah, that's that guy right there. How do you know? Because I recognize his face. That's how we've always done it. It's just now we're we're giving more of us to the digital side, you know, put more stock into what we uh, are amassing. I think people are bent out of shape because uh, they're using the li- uh, your your driver's license and giving uh, that information uh, to uh, things like uh, ICE, and uh, they're looking for illegal uh, aliens. And now people are kind of nervous that uh, now uh, if they're illegals, which is not the right term, they said, "Oh, don't call them illegals." But Trump uses the word "illegal," so I guess that I'm doesn't make that. it okay. It just makes him an idiot. <laughs> anyway, these. Uh, these so-called illegals are now nervous if they have a driver's license here. So uh, what do you think about this idea now? Well, let's change how we talk about them. We talk know? about the driver's Let's talk about license. people who are, uh, you know, 
<clears throat> not uh, registered Americans. They're not registered. Not citizens. Okay. They're, non-citizens. They're not. Are non-citizens afraid of, of moving their, you know, like, let's say, agency of their, you know, who they are and their personal information onto a publicly paid for and used document? Yeah, I think that's, I, I mean, that, that sounds like it's a pretty significant complaint. Here's the thing, what we're not, I think, really understanding is that it's not like non-citizens are just here running around committing crimes and are doing shit. They're doing things that, as Americans or as citizens, we are not willing to do for the rate, pay, lack of dignity, or the humiliation willing to be suffered to do the job. So I think that, you know, the, the humiliation, dignity we lack in taking those jobs, we should at least turn around and pay them whether or not they're, they're citizens, because that, that, that money that they're generating is still taxed. It's not refunded to them. It, you know, there's, or some, in some cases it is, but it's still moving along. It's a big machine, and they're helping to pay for it. So it's important to, to distinguish the fact that they're non-citizens from the fact that they're, or the way we turn or talk about them really does affect how we think about them and then eventually how we treat them. Okay. Well, we don't really want to uh, discuss too much about the uh, immigrant situation because that seems to be on the news uh, just about every day. I mean, if it isn't one thing, it's another. Uh, non-citizens. Uh, the non <laughs> Or pre-citizens. How about that? I mean, weren't we all pre-citizens citizens at one point? I mean, I, that's the thing I can't get my head around is that people like to forget the past when it comes to bad things. Well, how about, you know, the fact that we're all just a big milieu of, of different nations to begin with? It's not like we, you know... Uh, it's hard to it's hard to distinguish, you know, where people get the the I would say the authority or the even the 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 self importance to say things like these people are, you know, of a different class or different kind because they don't have citizenship in our country. What the heck is a country? It's just a it's a term. I mean, it's a legal entity, right? You know, and so it it really comes down to money, and it it sickens me to to keep, you know, hearing how badly and seeing, because you can see it, you know, you just got to go through the, uh, for example, here in Hadley, go through the fields, the farm fields during, uh, you know, harvest. Yeah, You're not going to see the farmer and his sons and daughters out there. I, I see a lot of people out in the fields they, when I'm driving around, so I know Very that they do. Very they, uh, I don't really uh, look too closely, but I, I'm you sure that uh, the, uh, you can pr uh, uh, pretty much tell that they're not really regular Americans. Although I personally had cut asparagus in Hadley uh, one mm -hmm. summer, but I only did that for like two weeks or something. You probably looked really dark. Well, uh, <laughs> I'm just saying it's a very clear. Just, you know, it's very clear. It's, I mean, whether or not they're Americans or citizens, that's another good way of putting it. But, you know, the, it's very obvious that it, not only that, but it's, what is this, 2019? I mean, this is obviously an a industry that has been moving and has been there forever. Don't think that all of a sudden these people who are non-citizens are all of a sudden available in surplus at certain times to work in these mobile communities. No, this is a, this is a long-established tradition of, of using other classes, of lower classes that we consider inferior or less valuable for some reason, which is wrong. We've been using them. We talked about this last time about Saudi Arabia importing people to, to do work for them. That's exactly what America does. Yeah, we do basically exactly the same America thing. Does. They will have people yeah. from other countries. Uh, I think some of the uh, politicians got themselves into trouble because they had uh, hired help that they weren't uh, paying properly. And once it was discovered that they had this uh, these hired uh hired help working at their houses and stuff and then they started to apologize but the states you know, that's uh, that's uh something that's probably been going on for years you know people do stuff and they uh you know they don't want to be discussing the situation just like this thing now with this guy that uh got con convicted in uh in Florida 10 years ago and now the 12 yeah what was that? The guy, uh, the guy is now the uh, Secretary of Labor, and he had arranged some kind of special deal for this uh, guy that had uh, uh, been uh, dealing with underage uh, uh, girls, and uh, uh, he had already uh, done some time in Florida, but it was kind of a, a joke because he still went off to work 
uh, and then he came back to sleep at the jail there. It wasn't really much of a jail sentence. He'd went right. off in, a, in his limo or something, and then he came back. And, and the prosecutor from um, Florida is now the labor secretary. Yeah, that's, uh, so this is a big story. So they're talking about this, and they said that this guy should resign. Uh, this is uh, stuff uh, from uh, people's past, and uh, a lot of times reporters will dig up information from the past and they'll say, oh, this is what happened years ago. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, just about anybody has some kind of uh, skeletons in the closet, so to speak, that uh, you might not really uh, want to be uh, discussing in uh, public. But, uh, but this... you know, there's, I think there's a difference between skeletons and um, <clears throat> trafficking, you know, sex trafficking, not to be, you know, put too fine a point on it. I did see an article in, in one of the. Uh, I did see an article in, in the article. I saw a picture, and it showed. And this is kind of the nefarious, or the like, the, the little, you know, be careful, scary part of it. I would say that it was a picture, and it must have been twenty, twenty-five years ago. Just judging on again facial recognition, uh, the how old the people looked in the picture. Donald Trump was uh, standing next to this gentleman who I wouldn't call him a gentleman. I shouldn't call him a gentleman. The guy who's now being indicted. Out of Florida, he has a Manhattan residence as well and others. He's super, you know, uber rich. And so in a way, he's above the law or that's the way it's treated. And Donald Trump, the guy who is being convicted or whatever is convicted, has been charged, at least indicted. He looked the same, you know, it was probably about 20, 25 years earlier, this photo. And then Donald Trump, he looked considerably younger. And I thought, you know what, this guy, Donald Trump, he just is like uh He's just a good old boy from the club, and they they kind of groomed him and made him what he is now—a little fucking you know ignorant pit bull, you know not to put it too finely. And they put him out in front, and they get to do whatever they want to in the background. Well, what happens is now with you know so many people being offended, it's people starting to wake up to the idea that hey, wait, the emperor is not wearing any clothes. Well. Uh... I know that uh, uh, this story has been uh, talked about on the radio quite a bit, and now they're uh, uh, thinking that uh, this is going to uh, cause problems for the Republicans. Uh, uh, they don't really know how to deal with it because uh, this is uh, uh, this is what, uh, like I I think, uh, the feminazis are, p are pushing the feminazis. What do you think about that idea? Yeah, I think that's a terrible term. <laughs> Um, it sounds like you're talking about. I'm talking you know, about women that women are, are imposing. Are see the imposing. And they uh, they want to uh, turn the United. They want to girlify the United States. You think? Let that, me tell you uh, what the other half of the room believes. The 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 issue is that the largest minority in the world, largest group of minorities in the world, is the female gender, because of the, just the classical uh, oppression they've dealt with from men. Right? Is that not? That that, true, that is true, true, but uh, and now they're uh, digging up uh, all kinds of uh, dirt on uh, just about anybody that they don't particularly like. Uh, for example, isn't I, that what politicians do? Well, uh, I, I I can give a good I'd example. Say more power to them, you know what? And if it takes it, takes them down, takes them down. Uh, I happen to like uh, Bill O'Reilly. I used to like to watch him on the TV, and he got himself into that situation. Would so you like it to be pressured you to have sex in a hotel room? I don't know if Bill O'Reilly did some of these things. I'm sure that uh, uh, some of these people have had— Would you like it if he grabbed you under the table? Well, I'm not sure if Bill O'Reilly did all these things there, but uh, I'm sure that uh, anybody that has uh, some kind of uh, fame and uh, uh, some status. Uh, Would you like it if Bill O'Reilly came behind you and started massaging your shoulders? <laughs> Doing a Joe Biden impression. Uh, Bill O'Reilly. I happen to like Bill O'Reilly because so you would let he, him he, rub your shoulders. He seemed to uh, tell it like it is, but then some people. He's like, I'm rubbing your shoulders, yawn. <laughs> Well, uh, we'll change the subject there, but I just wanted to mention that there there were people that uh, uh, had uh, like, well, Bill uh, Bill O'Reilly was just one, and then you had the guy from the Today Show. What was his name? The guy from the Today Show. They, they um, took off. Uh, Ron Perlman. Matt. Uh, Matt uh, Lauer. Matt Lauer. Uh, Margaret Thatcher. 
Well, there were certain ones that uh, were prominent uh, figures uh, in the media, and all of a sudden they disappeared because they had accusations uh, against them. So I'm sure that uh, just uh, just about anybody that has some kind of uh, public uh, uh, persona, they'll probably come up with some kind of information. For example, they might be digging up information about me that they might say that, oh, this guy doesn't like feminazis or something. They don't have to dig, man. You're, you're pretty much I'm, laying I'm, it out I'm, there. I'm, I'm telling it like it is here. No, you're uh, telling how you think it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, and I, I got that term from a prominent radio personality. That oh, my was, God. Uh, wait, hold on. Rush Limbaugh was a yeah. prominent uh, yeah, radio that's person. That's the guy. That's, that's the guy. That's not a prominent he, anything. He's that's a, a prominent, prominent radio idiot. personality. <laughs> And there was uh, also a prominent radio personality that was involved with the Watergate. He used to have a program on the radio. I forget his name, the guy with the mustache. Who was that guy there? That Adolf Hitler, uh, also prominent. No, not uh, the, who else? This, this uh, was Jeffrey a guy Dahmer, from uh, also prominent. Uh, from the Watergate uh, thing from uh, Nixon, also from, prominent. Yeah, there was, uh, and he had his own talk show there, and I can't Deep remember throat. his name. For, Deep Throat. Uh, I don't remember who it was, but anyway, uh, Deep Throat. Uh, I used to listen to a lot Best of these uh, ever. Uh, talk show people on the radio there, and some of these people uh, did have interesting perspectives. Uh, so uh, just because you might have a, a contrarian a viewpoint doesn't necessarily mean people are going to try to uh, bring you down. It's just an alternative viewpoint. That's true. That's a good point. Uh, but if if it if the point or the viewpoint is a derogatory or judgmental point of view, then you can't take one without the other. They're not mutually exclusive in that case. You mean, if you're saying that women only deserve a certain amount of voice or, you know, authority in this situation, then you're trying to curb or compartmentalize what they are able to do. And that's not fair. Just like women pretty much don't try and compartmentalize or, or you know, uh, judge men. It's almost like a reaction to all of that's been going on that they are coming out of the closet, so to speak. And I would, that's actually, I'm not comfortable with that <laughs> expression. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, I'm just using that term because that was uh, one of those radio phrases that I well, kind of You don't have remember. to repeat everything you hear, you know. Yeah, you I'm know. sure that uh, there's stuff that I hear. Uh, but uh, the internet is. I'm not a crook. The the, the internet is uh, a notorious for giving uh, fake news. Mm. So uh, uh, usually you have to rely on uh, more reliable sources. I like to consider National Public Radio as a more reliable source than uh, uh, John Doe's uh, uh, Twitter Twitter feed or whatever they want to. John be. the Deer Farmer. My it could, apple be, deer it could be it could be him or it could be anybody. Hey because, John, another shout out to John. Because uh, just about anybody in this day and age, and that includes the two of us, uh, can just about say anything on uh, uh, the internet now, and uh, uh, people will be listening. And some yeah. people might say, "Hey, hey, that sounds great," and some say might say, "It's time to get these people." <laughs> I that's true, right? It seems like half the time people are happy and half the time they're pissed off. Yes. I have something contentious I want to throw out there just to put the onus on me a little. Uh, I don't know if I talked about this last time. That did I tell you that it was recently discovered that dolphins are whores? Yeah, you mentioned that on the last episode it there, is so and true. I think that he was kind of promoting the idea that uh, dolphins look a little bit like mer mermaids and uh, oh. uh, 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 people uh, want to jump in the ocean to go have sex with a mermaid, but it's actually a dolphin. I think that's what it's actually. Uh, no, what I'm trying to say is that dolphins have weak moral character and sharks are really our friends. Oh, it has nothing to do with mermaids? No, nothing to do with mermaids, imaginary water vagina, nothing, no sailors. Because, uh, you know, like I said, I was a Viking American, and uh, I used that uh, uh, that you symbol. You were a the, 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 the symbol of the... sounds like a medication, the, Vicarican. The, the snake eating its tail is called the Ouroboros, and uh, I used that as a symbol, and that was called the Viking Serpent. So they had a lot of these legends, the Vikings and stuff, so I'm sure that 
mermaids might have been uh, a part of their uh, legends that uh, they traveled around and might have seen uh, mermaids. But then uh, mm -hmm. wasn't there that, what was it, the Odyssey about the sirens? What was that story? You remember that story? Mm, I, I'm Mexican. And no, I mean, Mexico, it was a famous... Uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, we have sirenas, which are mermaids. And but we, you know, brought those onto land and, you know, ate them years ago. I'm talking about these uh, uh, mythical creatures that uh, not Chimera? only uh, uh, the the Vikings might have seen uh, sea serpents and uh, uh, they might have. Aren't you finished? Are you finished? Uh, I am uh, uh, finished. Uh, Good. Next uh, subject. But I don't know how to speak Finnish. Uh, uh, the, oh, uh, it was done. like uh, that was one of the numbers. It's a uksi guksi golamanelia is one two three four in Finnish. Uh, so I used to use that when I was doing a countdown. Uksi guksi golamanelia, but I don't remember the rest of the uh, numbers there. That like so a Lord of the Rings language. Uh, and uh, Finnish, uh, I think somebody told me, isn't really classified as. Uh, uh, Elven. A, a truly Scandinavian. I think that they had like a, it was like a separate from the rest of the uh, uh, countries up north. There, it was uh, more like uh, Russian as opposed to uh, uh, one of the other countries up north. There. That makes but, sense. Uh, but uh, the Russians did uh, fight the uh, Finns. As as a matter of fact, there was a phrase that I. Uh, uh, that I learned when I was in elementary school, and it was uh, a question that was uh, on uh, in the book. There, it said, uh, "Why are fire engines red?" Because the sky is. No, uh, the answer was two plus two is four. Four times three is twelve. There are twelve inches in the ruler. Queen Elizabeth is a ruler. Queen Elizabeth is also a boat. A boat sails on the sea. A sea has fish. The fish have fins. The fins fought the Russians. The Russians are red, and that's why fire engines are red, because they're Russian all over. Oh, my God. Please tell me when you're finished. <laughs> that was something that I learned in elementary school. I like that, actually. That's pretty cool. That was pretty good there because it's kind of abstract thinking there, which a lot of people don't do in this day and age. They look stuff up on the Internet, and uh, the Internet might have the information, and it might not have the information. One fine day in the middle of the night, two dead boys got up to fight. Back to back, they faced each other, drew their swords, and shot another. That's all I'm going to reiterate that sounds like one of those uh, uh, uh dreams that you have while you're uh, it's like a limerick or whatever from grammar school for me oh okay that was a limerick well i don't know if it was a limerick i don't know what the hell a limerick is what is that a could limerick? have been haiku, I, a haiku? Don't, uh, I don't remember those things we had to go through all that stuff in school and you know uh i had five years of latin and so what are you supposed to do when you go on a job interview you said oh mr job interview person there i had five years of latin and he said well i don't really give a rat's ass if you had five years of latin can you uh, use a computer and i said well no i don't use computers so okay next <laughs> i don't know why don't you tell me <laughs> i don't care that's a haiku okay uh it's also I, a limerick. Uh, I I don't remember my uh, uh, school stuff there, even the Latin. I don't really remember much of that stuff. And I actually had German for two years. And I just want to give a little shout out. I want to say Ohio to Megumi because I have the opportunity. Okay, well, this will be... Uh, uh, probably uh, put on the internet so uh, some people might be able to pick up uh, some of the uh, secret society stuff that we talk about because uh, 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 we do have a secret society here. That's the Ouroboros in a circle. <laughs> you, uh, yeah. Uh, I love secret societies. Uh, Except for, like, bad ones. He was uh, telling me about uh, the Ivy League secret societies, and uh, you said Brown had a secret society? No, I said that Brown, being as intelligent as we are, 
if they had a secret society, I never heard about it. They kept it a secret from me successfully. But uh, there are secret societies in some of these Ivy League schools. Which, you know, not that secret, right, if we know about them. Well, is, is, isn't there a famous one in Harvard? Well, yeah, but Harvard, you know, mistakenly, mistaken as geniuses. You know what they used to chant at us at the football games? I went to Brown University, class of 94. Uh, they used to chant, uh, brown is the color of beep, you know? Brown is the color of shit. I mean, Harvard. Well, see, uh, some of these are just college students, so they, uh, they're they not uh, expected to uh, act like ad- adults until after they graduate. Yeah, well, no, forget acting. They don't even speak like uh, young adults as they are. And they're like the cream <laughs> of the cream. You know what else I think about cream of the cream? The, the, people talk about how cream comes rises to the top, right? Right. Well, don't they also say shit floats, right? That's probably true. I haven't really paid too much attention to that. If you put a piece of poop that when you're on the bus, if you put a piece of poop in cream, it'll float. So guess who's president? Okay. I <laughs> saw an awesome uh, pumper sticker the other day. It said someone else for president. All righty. Well, uh, a lot of people don't like Trump, but then there's a lot of people that don't like uh, El- Elizabeth Warren because uh, of her... Uh, 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 views on society. Mm. You know, I tell you, Trump makes her look really good. Well, you think uh, Elizabeth Warren might be uh, uh, the possible nominee, or would you think it might be one of the other uh, two dozen people? I think, uh, therefore, I am. Okay, he's not going to make a comment about that, but I did hear that there's this uh, uh, billionaire in California that hopped onto the bandwagon as Ross well. Ross Perot. No, Ross he Perot died. Jr. Ross Perot Jr.? No, no, no. There's some uh, rich guy in California that uh, is now uh, uh, going to try to become president. He figures that if Donald Trump can do it, Arnold he can Schwarzenegger. Do it. Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, can't... Uh, be president. He wasn't born in the United States. Ah, Lou Ferrigno? No, I don't remember the guy's name there, but uh, I'm sure that uh, it's probably something that you can look up on the internet there. Oliver North? Rich, rich guy jumps onto Democratic bandwagon there, and I guess... So did you hear about Oliver North? Uh, apparently, Oliver North, the politician, criminal, joined forces with Peter North. No introduction necessary. And they're going to try and sue the Toronto Raptors for the slogan, We the North. Didn't hear about that? No, they don't talk about that on national public radio. That's one of those uh, topics that they don't Fabricated really news? Uh, yeah. uh, that sounds like it's one of those internet uh, news items that you'll pick up and then uh, uh, pass it on. I'll be putting that on the internet later, Jan. The uh, the internet has its good points and its bad points. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, or maybe fortunately, you mean I, dick pics? I, I don't have a computer, so I don't really look at the internet. So uh, uh, occasionally, I'll check my email, and actually, I think I have over two thousand emails that I have on my Gmail account, and I'm not sitting at the library for three hours looking at. 2,000 emails that I've gotten over the last few years there. They just keep sending you emails. Most of it is junk emails that I don't really think is worthwhile looking at. Maybe it might be worthwhile. Just like regular mail, right? If you add I'm up sure all the that, junk yeah, you get junk mail and you don't really look at it. And I used to just pile up the mail from the uh, U.S. post office and just stick it in boxes and... Uh, then that would be piling up too. So uh, uh, it's the same thing with regular mail. Now the email is piling up. It's just uh, never ending. If it isn't one thing, it's another. That's uh, pretty much the option. The, uh, right? uh, the, uh, the email thing, it just makes things a little more uh, convenient. But uh, uh, I, I had just too many emails on the Gmail account, so I had to uh, set up some other email accounts, uh, and if I even mention one of these other accounts, all of a sudden I get get all kinds of 
emails because uh, I listed a, an alternative email that I have, and now all of a sudden I get a pile of emails from a certain place there. I'm not going to mention the name, but uh, uh, I ordered something, uh, and uh, I, I listed one of these alternative emails, and now they just keep sending me emails and emails, like uh, two, three dozen emails, and I'm not really interested. You know, it's just one product that I ordered, and they'll send you all kinds of information now. It's kind of overwhelming. They'll, they'll, once they have your email, they'll uh, send you all kinds of information, but that's what they claim that they do with uh, the phones there. People uh, 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 want information, and they track your every... Uh, every little thing that you order or whatever you say on the, on the phone there and they'll catalog it. It's probably something done by the NSA. Yeah, I would imagine my whole life fits on like a ever diminishing, diminishing USB chip, whatever that, whatever is, that is. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, most like of the... the smallest uh, of microfish, like the smallest of smallest little digital files will have my my whole life all the information i could ever accumulate they probably can put it on i think i i i heard something on the radio about uh uh that they uh were saying that uh you know some of these uh college students will put stuff on the internet like they're drunk and they're uh kind of making jokes and stuff while they're drinking and then uh, that'll they'll use that information against uh, uh, these people uh, years later. They said, "Oh, we're not going to hire you. This is what you had on the internet. There, we don't want somebody that's drunk and stuff." And somebody will say, "Well, that was like five years ago. Yeah. Oh, we don't want to be hiring you. So uh, you have to be careful what you put on the internet because uh, uh, it might uh, cause problems in the future if you are." Uh, you know, applying for jobs, so they'll find... I would, yeah, I would say be careful what you put out there. Internet, you know, in public, definitely. And, and, and I'm going to have to say I have to go. That's going to have to be a wrap. I have to go. We're gonna, uh, one more now. thing about the Internet that I wanted to mention is about the secret society, uh, the uh, secret society down with the Border Patrol that they said that they oh, had. I'll the, look it up. We'll talk the, about it the next The Border week. Patrol were uh, making uh, comments about the politicians and stuff there, and people were outraged. They said, these are Border Patrol people, and it's like a secret society. Uh, so this is uh, stuff that, uh, you know, that, that happens. Even the Border Patrol is now having trouble because they were putting stuff on the Internet. I'll see you next week. We're finishing up here. We'll, uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be doing another program. Yeah, we'll do another program. We'll catch you later. Well, you can check that up about the Border Patrol there. Yeah, they, I'll look it there's, up. I think there's uh, hundreds of them that are a secret society. I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. Thank you. Okay. Set there. I don't Hold know. Up. You have to press a button there. Yep. Yeah.